Welcome to the Zen Superman podcast. Today's episode is going to be about time pressure. Because so often when you are calm, when there is nothing pressing on your calendar, on your schedule, you have the patience to be there for your kids, not to lose your calm and you are not going to yell at them that easily. But when there is time pressure, when you have places to go, when there are 1000 things to do during your day, how do you not let that break you? How do you not let that time pressure damage the relationship with your kids? How do you not make them stressed out and anxious already since the morning? Interested? Let's dive in. Hi, I'm Elena Gomez Rodriguez, and I'm a mental fitness coach for busy moms. And this is the first podcast to help you increase your stress resistance so that you can become a Zen Supermom and simply do it all while staying calm and happy. Welcome to the Zen Supermom podcast. Hi, Supermom. Elena here, your mommy tantrum specialist and the founder of the Zen Supermom system, where we help loving but busy super moms stop yelling at your kids so that you can set healthy boundaries with calm and your kids grow up feeling loved unconditionally by you that's what we do and so often what i hear from our clients from moms who are interested in starting to working with us in my own life what i noticed is that when you're calm like when, when you don't have that much time pressure, you can be calmer. All those parenting techniques that you read about, you have access to it in your super smart brain. Like you remember it like, okay, this is what's happening now. That's why my child is having a tantrum. That's why they're saying no. So let me try this parenting technique. I remember it when you don't have that time pressure. But when it comes to the morning routine, like when you wake up, you're in a rush to get somewhere. Your kids need to go to school or to crash or wherever. When it's the evening and you're already super tired, exhausted, and you have a time in your head, like they should be in bed sleeping by this time so that I have at least this amount of time for myself. And when that's not happening, so again, time pressure, looking at your watch, like looking at the clock, oh my goodness, we are going to be late. This is terrible. Like that's when you're most likely to lose it, right? So how to avoid doing that? Because I'm not a magic fairy. I cannot wave my magical wand and make all your challenges and problems and extra things disappear and make your life easier for you. I cannot do it for you on the outside. But what is the most powerful place where you can go and start taking control and power back? Yeah, it's on the inside. And this is something that not many of us will be ready to hear. And if you told me 10, 20 years ago, I would close my ears and stop listening. <laughs> Because when he would tell me, like, look how you're creating it for yourself, I would tell you, like, no, 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 I'm busy and this is why and this is real and I'm not just making it up in my head. But yeah, I have to say that, like, the older I get, <laughs> the more curious I get about finding, I don't want to say hacks, because that's like when you want something too fast and you're not willing to pay the price for it, you're not willing to work for it. It's not a hack, but I've been looking for ways on how to make it easier on myself and how to do those ninja flips. Like, <laughs> how can you shift? Because I did realize like, I'm not going to get any less busy, like not anytime soon not until my daughter leaves our nest but then it's already going to be too late to be a calm mom like she's going to be gone by then <laughs> so how is it that i can grow this inner peace really and calm inside of me no matter what's going on on the outside so that i don't create the stress tornado in which my daughter gets caught up 
Because when I'm in calm and when I'm in my inner peace, then whatever tornado my daughter is caught up, whatever negative emotions, whatever anxiety, exhaustion, when she's tired, when she's hungry, when she starts like ah, <laughs> freaking out, I will then draw her into my peace. She calms down much faster when I am calm. Because at the beginning, it was exactly the opposite. Like she was okay. <laughs> But me and my stress and the time pressure I was putting on myself made me more nervous, made me more snappy. And that's what triggered my daughter. And then she became much more likely to have a tantrum and say no and just be super slow and like dragging her feet and then making it even worse. So then we were getting caught up in this negative dynamic, right? So is that something that's going for you right now? Because if it is, there are really ways how you can change it without anything else changing on the outside. Okay. And I don't mean to trigger your inner critic now so that you would feel like you need to get defensive because I'm attacking you. I'm pointing a finger at you. I'll point the finger at me. I used to do this. So I know exactly how it feels. I know it's not your intention. I know it's not your fault. But it is your responsibility to clean it up. So if you're interested in that, let's talk. And by the way, I brought my tea today because it's going to be a nice friendly talk, okay? <laughs> mm. And I made some notes as well, exceptionally, uh, because usually I follow, I flow with the line. There's like one place where I want to take you. Today, there will be a couple of different stops along the way because it is not one size fits all like with parenting i'm not a parenting expert i'm not going to ever give you advice on what to do with your kids i'm going to tell you what to do with yourself so that you're better with your kids mm -hmm. the same with time you have so many time management specialists and mommy routine like effectiveness time hackers and i don't know what for me none of that ever worked because they were cookie cutters, they were not adapted to what I wanted, how my daughter was, what is our family setup and dynamics. Like, they promise you to like save your time, and what I realized, I ended up wasting my time and feeling even more pressure. Because with all these time hacks and time routines, I realized it was like backwards. They were helping me to squeeze in more stuff in less time because I thought that was the key, like doing more in less time so that then I would have time to rest. Mm -hmm. But I realized that made me even more stressed. And then when the when I got everything done of my to do list, which was kind of exceptional because there's always more, <laughs> there's always more I could be doing for my work, for my clients, for my family, for myself, like there is always more. It does never end. If I want to get to the bottom of the to do list like that can doesn't have to end ever but if it did and I allowed myself to take a break then there was still I was so stressed out it took me even longer to just like ah, be able to breathe and recover from it and then my break was over and I had to start running again so it was kind of like <laughs> a false promise like speed up so that then you have time for yourself but I had to use that time for myself to recover from all that stress and prepare for more stress so it's like no thank you I don't need any time hacks time routines for busy moms does not work for me if it works for you great perfect you can share share with me anywhere on socials like whatever works for you I'm really happy for you. It didn't work for me. And if you're listening to this podcast episode, that would tell me that you're still looking for ways to figure it out. So it didn't really work for you either. Not fully. So how about we consider it's not about speeding up. What if it was not about being the best multitasker and being fastest and trying to save time by squeezing and doing as much as possible, as early, as soon, as fast enough. And I will give you an example. And this is really full transparency, honesty. You know, that's how I am. I'll always tell you directly how it is for me as well. This is something I am still working on. Like I have already healed all of my childhood trauma or as much as I'm aware of. <laughs> and some things still keep popping up from time to time. Minor. That is done. And that helped me realize that all of my 
basically conditioning all of those things were going back to my mom and how my parents was okay we are not here to blame the parents let's just say it how it is your relationship with time is conditioned by the culture and by the family you grew up in mm -hmm. now that being said i'm already at peace with that i'm fine but what's still kicking me in the butt is the autopilot and is the stories in my head that are playing on repeat and I'm going to tell you what I mean specifically by that. One of the examples that I just started recently working on, how I want to turn it around. So this is, call it hack, call it a tip, whatever you want. I realized that really a lot of that stress and time pressure is self-created. I do it to myself. Mm -hmm. It's my ego that wants to make me feel so important that, for example... I felt the need to start replying to my clients' emails, to my team's things like requests and questions and everything when I woke up. If it was not my daughter who would wake me up normally, most of the time <laughs> it's her, the alarm clock. But if it was not her and she was still sleeping, the first thing that I would go would be to my phone. And I would start just going through my mailbox and through my messages and like tack, 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 trying to get as much done as possible. But then the effect it had on me that the moment my daughter woke up, I was already full of all of this other stuff. And I was already thinking about my clients. And maybe there was an email that I read, but I knew I was not in the space of responding that it, I will need to like digest it a little bit, like some client questions, challenge, some situation. And I didn't want to just respond just automatically in a rush I knew it was going to take time I need to sit with it but then it was going on processing at the back of my mind while I was preparing the, uh, the breakfast for my daughter while she was sitting here and eating her breakfast so rather than being with her enjoying the one hour we have before she goes to school and because then the next time I see her is only in the evening rather than being fully present as a mom doing what I teach what I preach I was at the back of my mind with my clients. I was thinking about that stuff. I was already looking in my mind through my calendar, like what is it that I need to, what is it that I have on my day and how fast do I need to do these things in the morning? Do I have enough time for my yoga? Do I have enough time for my breakfast like smoothie or do I need to eat just something right now because I will not have enough time? Like blah, 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 stress, stress, stress since the morning. And I realized it was my ego. It was my self-importance. I gave myself the impression that I was so important that it couldn't wait. Like my responses to my clients, to my team, could not wait for two or three more hours. Like the world would stop spinning. And again, the illusion of saving time, like, yeah, let me do these emails like quickly before she wakes up. Like I will save 15, 20 minutes of my morning. So then I can do more yoga or have a calm breakfast without working at the same time. It's like, no. Because even if I save these 15 minutes now, not only is it going to mess up the entire morning with my daughter, I will not be there mentally. But even after she goes to school and I start my work day, like I'm not going to have just a 15 minutes break. I'll just keep on working and keep on being stressed about the time and just like <gasps> quickly, quickly, quickly before my first session and da, 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 da. Stop. So this is how my morning was different today. I have intentionally not even looked at my phone yet. I just look there because I need to, I want to check the weather forecast so that I know like for my daughter what she should wear, how many layers and if she needs a raincoat or whatever. So I was like opening the phone, flipping to the next screen. Like I don't want to see the email notifications, not even the first line, like whoop, flip, go to the weather forecast, read the weather forecast and turn it off again. Like I don't want to see you. <laughs> And then my daughter left for school and I was like, no, I'm going to do my yoga. I don't want to see because I have the luxury. I don't have any, I, I don't schedule. And again, luxury, I created it. I don't schedule any meetings on Wednesdays. Today is Wednesday. I don't do that because I want to have the creative space for myself. Because if I'm always running, there is nothing 
I'm always like firefighting or running after things, then there is no creative place from which I can move things forward, right? For that, you need space. So if you're in any creative profession or if your expression is creative in any way, you will notice that, right? You cannot create when you're in the middle of the, like the churn, the time churn. Mm -hmm. So I created Wednesdays without meetings. But what I noticed is that even on those Wednesdays before, I would still be stressed because I, yeah, I wake up in the morning, I see the through my mailbox <laughs> and I feel like, okay, and this is my to-do list. This is what I need to be doing today. And by the time I would get to this podcast, which is one of my things on my to-do list on Wednesdays, that's the creative piece, my head would be already full of stuff. So this is where I said no today. I didn't open the phone, not in the morning, not before my daughter woke up, not after she left for school. I did my yoga first. I have to admit it was still challenging to finish the whole yoga class because I was already feeling the, let's go, let's get going. <laughs> and now I'm doing this podcast and I still have not checked my emails. I have not checked my messages because the world will not stop spinning if I reply two, three hours later. It will actually, my responses, the way how I show up for everybody else now will be much better once I showed up for myself and once I have given myself that space. So your life situation might be completely different. Maybe you're in a corporate world and you have a schedule because your boss needs to be there, like needs you to be there at work or you have team meetings already since the morning. Maybe you're a home CEO I don't, I don't like the stay at home mom. You're not a stay at home mom. You're a home CEO. Your full time job, 24 seven job is taking care of your kids. Your situation might be different. What I don't want to use to close your ears and stop listening because it's like, you have no idea what my life is about and no, it's not possible for me. And what you can do yoga in the morning and you're complaining like you should be happy. La, 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 la. If you would stop the judge in your head and just open up to possibility that there might be something that you are <laughs> self-creating and that maybe you can change, you can shift. How would that look like for you? It might look completely different than for me. You might not have a morning like me, but what is it that if you really start being honest and open with yourself, you will start seeing that you are creating a lot of your own stress. Because I bet you've had that before in the past, right? Think about the last time when you had a really full day. There were lots of events, lots of places, lots of things to do, places to go, people to see, and you were happy through it for different reasons. Maybe it's because you were in control of it. Like it's you who scheduled it and it was all happy things and things you loved. There was no drama in it, even though you were really busy that day, but it was filling you up. It was charging your batteries. But then maybe there are days when you don't even have that much, you don't have that many meetings, that many places to go. But the few things that are on your to-do list, they are so draining. Why is that? Have you ever listened to the voices in your head? Well, you hear them all the time, you act on them all the time, but have you really listened to what they are telling you? Because I don't know how about you, but one of my strongest voices in my head was the victim. Poor me, I can't do this, so much pressure, I'm the main breadwinner, like there is no space for mistakes, for being lazy, for taking time for myself. I have to make this happen. And this is so not fair that there are moms who have rich husbands and both grandparents on speed dial in case the kids are sick, who have it so easy, like a paved up comfy path, like blah, blah, blah. And while many of these things were objectively true, the fact that I had this victim story on a repeat in my head, that's what making it much worse. Because the moment you feel like you're the victim, you give up your power, you give up control. You basically say, nothing I can do about it, only complain. And that complaining is only making it worse, right? 
So if you give up that victim story, if you start hearing it really in your head and the moment you hear it again, you will stop and you will say, hi, victim. All right, here you go again. Well, thank you for having probably some good intentions for me. I know you want to save me from feeling like I'm totally alone because I have at least you and you're helping me get some attention by complaining. But no, thank you. Not today. Like, I've got this. Go sit at the back seat of the bus. I'll keep driving. And I'll keep getting curious. What is it that I have in control? What is it that it is within my power and that I can change about the situation that will give me a sense of inner peace and calm? So that I don't get stressed out by the things that need to get done today on time. And let's talk about it. Who is writing your to-do list? And you'll be like, duh, me. <laughs> yeah, or my kids when they are sick and like their school schedule and stuff. Okay. Let me ask again. Who is writing your to-do list? Majority of it. If you run it through your head, what is it that you wanted to do today? Who put it there? What percentage of it is really non-negotiable? Like, yeah, picking your kids up from school. You, and you, that has to be on time. Otherwise, yeah, you get in trouble. But that's the minimum. Like, that's minority of your to-do list. Who scheduled most of it? And I bet it's not even your boss. Not always. It might be. And again, not pointing fingers to you, pointing fingers to me. What I realized that most of my to-do list is written by my hyperachiever, who's not feeling good enough. So I want to prove to everybody, including myself, that I'm good enough by doing more, better, faster. Do you have a hyperachiever as well? And the lie of the hyperachiever is, once you do this, once you achieve it, then you can feel good about yourself. Then you can relax. Then you feel happy. I'll be happy when... Now, I call it a lie because it is. Have you noticed? Because even in the day when you have run after your to-do list, like, I'm going to leave my heart and soul here. Just like, let me run as fast as I can so that I get it done. Did you feel good at the end of the day? Or did you still feel sh bad about the few th uh, things that you missed? Anyways, because your hyperachiever overscheduled, overfilled. And stress you out so much that you don't even have any energy to be happy because when you think about tomorrow you're like oh my goodness so now I have to do the same thing tomorrow otherwise my judge and inner like inner critic is going to beat me up because yesterday I was good and today I'm not how sustainable is that how long have you been running like this in a hamster wheel that keeps spinning faster and faster so that you keep managing more and more things and all that's leaving you with is a burnout so I'm going to ask you again who is writing your to-do list? Is it your hyperachiever? Or is it your pleaser? People pleaser. Doing things for others. So much for them. And there's a strength behind it, right? It's a huge empathy and care and nourishment. Like you care about nurturing others. And be it your kids, be it your husband, be it your friends, like whomever around your parents. You're doing so much for everybody before they even ask and again, all, it all goes back to your own childhood and the developmental generational stuff our parents give us. My mom was a hyperachiever. My mom was a pleaser. They made her believe it's selfish for girls to take care of themselves. You have to take care of others before you do that. You can never say no. You always have to fulfill everybody's wishes, ideally before they even ask. And ideally not 100%, but 1000% so that you can feel good about yourself. Because that is your mission in this world. Serve others. Mm -hmm. Thank you, mom. Thank you, grandma. Stops with me. Not going to be like a selfish, lazy mom. <laughs> of course, I'm taking care of my daughter. But this is where, and yeah, 
trauma therapy, dears, <laughs> not a DIY, not going to do that here. I have enough podcast episodes about that. But this is where you need to go and get the help to break that generational burden and that autopilot of thinking. It's selfish to take care of myself. It's selfish to say what I need so that others can fulfill my needs. Let's heal that, okay? Once you do, you'll be still left like me <laughs> with the autopilot, with the repeat, blah, 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 pleaser in my head who's feeling so resentful. So typically, and it again goes back to my childhood. So I was super resentful because I was raised to be a pleaser and it was a generational, uh, like a gender role. Hmm? I have a brother, younger brother, and we were taught very clearly the gender differences in our home. I was the one who's always supposed to help my mom with everything like cleaning, cooking, preparing everything i was getting up early in the morning well i was already awake but i was rewarded for being an early bird so i am still until today i got used to it i was rewarded for being up and helping my mom because she had so many things to do mm -hmm. my brother waking up two three hours later with a breakfast already on his table and like all the excuses for him like yeah and my mom was nagging like she was trying to make him do more but then it was already too late. Like he was already. So then when there was a chore he had to do, he was pushing it as late as possible. So that then he, he had time really to do just that one thing. When she told my mom, when she told me what to do, I was doing it immediately. Otherwise she was yelling at me like she was not happy. <laughs> she was having me have it. So I was doing it as, as fast as possible. So then there were more things coming to my plate. Mm -hmm. So I was busy the whole morning. By the time my brother woke up, like, no, not enough time. Grandparents are coming for lunch. But yeah, you don't have any time, brother. Like, he just had to go and brush his teeth and, and change from his pajamas. That's all he had time for. Grandparents were there. I was the one who was cooking with my mom since the morning, who was preparing the table, setting everything, like helping her make sure everything is ready, everything is clean, right? Because I was there and I was doing it immediately. I was raised to be that way. Pleaser, not saying no, just taking it, whatever needs to get done, just let's do it fast so that then we can relax. And there was never space to relax because there was always more. And so I grew up being super resentful towards my brother, right? Because how come he can have it easy? How come it's all on me? How come I'm the one doing everything here, right? And then the funny thing is, because this is not a whining party blaming my brother for everything. It was not his fault. It's not even my mom's fault. Like this is the conditioning. This is what the culture is doing to us, right? But the funny thing is, I had such a huge aha moment when I got this. I realized I started doing the same with my husband. Because with my husband, it's not because he was raised to be lazy. <laughs> Sorry for the judgment, but yeah, for my brother. He's, my husband is from a different culture. I'm from the culture where the time is measured and expected to be re respected. And when people live, like they divide their time, they divide their day in time blocks and like everything has its place. You need to be on time and you need to plan for time. My husband comes from a culture where the time is not as important as being in the moment. So when he gets into something, for example, when he gets immersed with my daughter, reading a book, uh, doing her homework or checking, like explaining her something, she asks just like, you know, how small kids has, ask a question like, yeah, and how does this happen? Or why is this happening? He can spend one hour going into detail with her, showing her videos on YouTube, drawing pictures and, and making models to, to show her 3D and stuff, he will completely lose track of time. Now, for me, now that I am calm, that I'm more in peace, I can appreciate that as a strength. And I'm happy my daughter has a father who can do that because most of the time I cannot. Like me spending one hour, just like <laughs> unscheduled time, that doesn't happen very often. Okay, Maybe in the weekends, definitely not during the week. I, I look at the clock, not being stressed by it, but 
we have <laughs> routines, we have things that need to happen in a certain sequence, right? My husband can do that. But why can he do that without suffering any consequences of delays and then her being overtired and not getting enough sleep and everything and being hungry, having to wait for dinner for two hours? Because I'm there at the background. I'm the one who's catching everything else. I'm the one who cooks the dinner while he plays. I'm the one who does everything else, like laundry, set up, like thinking about the time, like, hey guys, five minutes and it's bedtime because otherwise she's going to be too tired and then tomorrow morning is going to be pain in the butt, right? I'm the timekeeper. I'm the manager <laughs> of everything else in the meantime. And it used to make me super resentful. Because how is it that... I am the stressed out, nagging, time police, fun destroying person while he gets to be the fun, the patient, the always happy and relaxed one. How is that not fair? How come he's not helping more? How come it's like, no wonder I'm so exhausted at the end of, at the, end of the day because I, I put everything on myself. This is not fair. Only when I caught this victim pleaser voice in my head and when I realized it's all going back to my childhood that I have to heal, like the injustice and this generational gender trauma, <laughs> like girls work and guys have it easy, that that's what's been playing on and acting out. I've been recreating it in my relationship. Only that gave me the, okay, <laughs> I get it now. All right, it makes perfect sense. Okay. So this was a long story, very personal. Why I'm sharing all of <laughs> our <laughs> dirty laundry on public is because I want you to have your aha moments. Who taught you it's not okay to say what you need? Who taught you that you need to take everything on yourself without asking for help before it's too late and you're already mad, resentful? Who did that to you? And how is that not true? And do start catching that victim pleaser story in your head. Because this is all it took for me. Like once I then like healed it, once I was okay with my brother, like you could hear as I was telling that story, there are still more I need to work on that I realize now as I'm telling you. But I did heal majority of it. Once you do that, then you're able to really have a look, curious, observing, without judging yourself, without judging anybody else. Well, how is it that I'm contributing to this relationship dynamic? How it is that I'm, I am feeling my to-do list with things that I wouldn't have to be doing. How it is that I can, I can start encouraging my husband to take on more responsibilities around the house so that we balance each other off and it's not tipping to these extremes. Like I'm the one who's doing everything and then, then I'm stressed and he's the one who's just having the fun and then he's fine and he's happy and my daughter loves him. And she feels stressed out when she's with me. How can we find the middle ground? This is the work. And it's very important, not only for you so that you don't burn out, but it is important for your relationship as well. Because I cannot tell you how many clients we have that as soon as they clean up the yelling at the kids, so they stop yelling, they can have patience with the kids, which is like in two, three sessions, most of them are done. They have five sessions inside the Zen Supreme program. Then they spend the remaining two cleaning up the relationships with their husbands, spouses, partners. With the significant one. Because it has put so much strain on. They are so resentful. They are so mad. How come he's not helping more? And they are making the dynamic worse themselves. And I'm not saying it's 100% your fault, but it is 50-50. And it's not because you're not doing enough. It's not because you're not nagging <laughs> your husband enough. It's because you come from your trauma, from that injustice, that feeling of unfairness and just heaviness and that load and that resentment that does not have to be there. Okay. 
once you start catching the stories and once you start the opportunity catching the opportunities to turn it around so small example right now our mornings have changed i used to prepare warm lunches for both my daughter and my husband so that they would take it with them in like this little thermos term ah, thermic like the it keeps the heat inside so that it stays hot until they eat it dur uh, during noon I used to prepare that. Either I prepared it the night before or I was making it from the scratch in the morning while they were playing. Because yeah, I wanted them to spend time. My daughter sees much more of me still than she sees my husband. So I wanted them to have a good quality time. So I took it on me to prepare the lunches, breakfast, everything. So I was busy in the mornings. Not anymore. <laughs> So it also changed because my daughter is now having lunches at school. She's at a different school and they have like school lunch. And since then I told my husband like, you're on your own. <laughs> like I want to have some fun in the morning as well. So now in the morning I have time to draw, play cards. What is it that we did today? We just cuddled today. Then yesterday we looked through like a toy catalog because Christmas is coming. So we were just flipping through a <laughs> magazine full of toys and and dolls and my daughter was telling me what she's going to write on her christmas list for um, Père Noël for yeah Santa Claus yeah losing my english even so i'm having fun now in the mornings and there are mornings when my husband is busy or he sleeps longer or he wants to play and talk uh, with our daughter as well so then he doesn't have time to make his lunch so then he buys it somewhere his responsibility, he's an adult. <laughs> it's like, yep, <laughs> I still do a lot for him, but this one I just, I decided, nope, finished. <laughs> I want my mornings back. Okay, what is it that you can stop doing for others without them even asking you, but you feeling like I need to do it to be a good wife, I need to do it to be a good mom. They expect it from me, they rely on it. Where is it that you can empower them Maybe your kids are already big enough. You, they can help you. They can start preparing their food with you. Or maybe your husband is just like, hey, look, I'm not your mom. You cannot expect to have a healthy relationship with an adult person if you keep treating them like your kid. How do you then want to keep still the romance and the intimacy of being like partners, being on a team? If you degrade them or if you let them behave like a, another child that you need to take care of then it's very difficult to flip the switch at the end of the day and start behaving like a wife because you're still in the mom mode it's like i had to clean up your socks i had to do this for you because you're not taking care of yourself i'm the one who's taking care of the entire household you just come here and eat and sleep and maybe play with the kids for a little bit but i'm the mom of you as well how can you expect then to have any romantic feelings for them if you let yourself be put in this mother role okay and i realize we are going even out of the time theme <laughs> i let myself get carried away because this resentment in the relationships like this is a big one i think i could even make an entire episode on that one okay <sighs> let me regroup Time pressure. Yeah, this is how you buy time. Stop doing things for others when they could be and maybe sometimes should be doing them for themselves. Okay. It will help you not only stop burning out and feeling stressed about time, it will help you also stop being resentful. Everybody wins. Okay. Let me check my notes if there's anything. Yeah. The last thought I wanted to leave you with, because the moment you start saying no, to all these things the moment you start saying no to speeding up no to multitasking no to doing things for others no to that inner hyper achiever like you <laughs> letting your hyper achiever write down your to-do list once you start saying no you start noticing there's much more space and it doesn't even have to be like space in terms of time to do nothing but even just mental space less clutter in your mind you start being much more laser focused on what are the key things maybe just one or two that are important for the coming hours 
Okay, so if it's the evening, I'm going to go and pick my daughter from school. What is the one or two most important things? Like, yeah, we do need to eat. And I want to relax with her. I'm a, I want her to make her feel seen and loved and just that she can just like whew, decompress. After a full day of fun and busyness and, and yelling and screaming and dancing with other kids, like so many inputs, so many like sensory overwhelm. So I'm going to be her calm anchor. With open arms, open heart, I'll be there for her. I'm not going to check my emails during those two hours, two or three hours we have together. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be there fully for her and for me because it nourishes me as well. Again, stop the victim stories. Especially, I have worked with so many single moms and they're telling me, like, I'm alone. It's me who needs to do everything and taking care of my kids feels like a chore. Catch that victim story in your head. You're not alone. And you're not the victim of being a mom. How is it that you could allow yourself to nourish yourself with that relationship? How is it that every hug you give is not because you have to? Because that's what the book says, like make your kids feel loved, so come give me a hug. But how is it that you could actually connect? How is it that you could use that hug for yourself <laughs> to appreciate it and to feel like, oh my goodness. I have always wanted to be a mom. When I was a little girl playing with dolls, I was dreaming about how amazing it's going to be to get married and have kids. Well, guess what? Congratulations, your dreams came true. <laughs> Are you enjoying it? I'll be happy when... Tuk, 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 three dots. Are you happy because do you have everything you ever wished for? And even if you're a single mom and some things got screwed up along the way, did you always dream about being a mom? Are you happy to be a mom? Even being perfectly imperfect mom, having perfectly imperfect kids, isn't that what you wanted growing up? So catch that victim voice where it's preventing you from enjoying it because you will not be happy when. You can be happy now. It's your choice. There are things to be always grateful for if you allow yourself to shift to that perspective and not be stressed by time. Because 20, 30, 40 years from now, what's going to matter the most? How do you want to think back about these moments, these days that you're living right now? What's going to be the most important thing? And maybe let's keep that in mind. Once you see your kids again. At the end of the day. Or even at the end of listening to this podcast. Maybe they are somewhere around pulling on your feet, pulling on your pants, like, mommy, mommy, mommy. <laughs> Maybe you can look at them with a different vibe now. Because again, not pointing fingers. If anywhere, I'll point finger at me. I used to be a human doing. And again, childhood trauma. I was <laughs> rewarded for doing better and more. That's how my mom then showed me her love so i got the appreciation if i was overachieving that's why my hyperachiever voice that's how it got in my head so i was a human doing but i'm an adult now i have a choice i don't have to keep blaming my mom for the rest of my life i'm not a victim of my repeat stories in my head i can choose to let it come back <laughs> calm down at the background like turn down the volume of the intensity of that voice and I have the choice. I can choose to be a human being really instead of a human doing. I can be more. And that's the feeling that you want to get even in the middle of the busy day because you have that power. Once you find that space inside of you and I've without getting like metaphysical, spiritual, religious, whatever, but I did realize for me, it's that feeling of inner peace. It comes from the inside. I cannot wait like one day, one moment, and then I will feel at peace. Then I will relax after these conditions are met. After I tick off these boxes, then I can be at peace. Flip it. You first be at peace in love with yourself, no matter how crazy that sounds, but at peace. 
and then you have a look at your to-do list and revise it. Then you have a look at your schedule today and then you start going after those things. Make sense? So this is what I want to leave you with because that's, I think is the most important message out of anything I can ever share with you. That your inner peace is your choice and you always have that choice at every moment of your day. Does it sound simple? Yeah. Is it easy? No. It's a lifelong practice. And that's what I'm realizing. No matter how my ego would love to tell you, look at me, I'm the guru, I'm the teacher, I have it all figured out. I don't, and that's okay. I am work in progress. There are some things that you can heal pretty fast, like that childhood trauma, the generational stuff. And there are some things like this autopilot, and that's what we do in mental fitness practice. It's a lifelong practice. It takes patience. It takes... I don't want to say discipline because that feels heavy, but it is. It takes the awareness of catching it, catching the voices and realizing there are no shortcuts, quick fixes. Life will keep coming and you will just get back on track. Stop the I'll be happy when. Be now. I'm sending you a big hug, super mom. Have a nice day in peace and calm.